Good day, learners. I am Miss Tin, your Guru Kamigo. Welcome to another fun and exciting learning with me. Today, we will learn about modes of reproduction in flowering and non-flowering plants. At the end of this video lesson, you will be able to describe the different modes of reproduction in flowering and non-flowering plants, such as moss, fern, mongo, and others. Plants do not only grow from seeds. There is another way of growing plants. It is true a sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction produces individuals that are genetically identical to the parent plant. Some plants like moss, fern, katakataka, potatoes, garlic, and many others undergo a sexual reproduction. A sexual reproduction in plants may either be natural vegetative reproduction or artificial vegetative reproduction. Number 1. Natural Vegetative Reproduction It is any form of asexual reproduction occurring in plants in which a new plant grows and develops naturally without human intervention. It occurs when an ancillary bud grows into a lateral shoot and develops its own roots. New plants may sprout from stems, roots, or leaves of a parent plant. Modified stems are most often the source of vegetative plant propagation. Vegetative plant structures that arise from plant stems include rhizomes, runners, bulbs, tubers, and corms. Tubers can also stretch from roots. Plantlets emerge from plant leaves. Runners Some plants like the strawberry and ferns have stems that grow along the ground from the parent plant. These stems are called runners. It can be cut and the new plant can be transferred to another place for it to continue growing. Bulbs. It is a large, rounded bud with a small basal stem at the lower end. It has fleshy, scale-like overlapping leaves as onions. Its function is to store food and propagate. Simply taking a bulb or to form the parent plant and transferring to a new location will enable you to grow new plants. Tubers. A tuber is a thick and enlarged portion of a stem that grows underground. It bears small scale-like leaves and tiny buds called eyes. When the eyes are separated from the parent plant, they may sprout new shoots and form new leaves and roots. An example of this is a sweet potato. Rhizome. Rhizome or root stalks is a plant stem found either at the soil surface or underground. It contains enlarged portions called nodes, from which roots and shoots originate. When separated, each piece of a rhizome is capable of producing a new plant as it grows up out of the ground. Examples of rhizomes are ginger and crabgrass. Suckers, an upright shoot that grows from buds found at the base of the stems of present plants. Banana, bamboo, pineapple, and bird of paradise are some examples of plants that reproduce suckers. Plantlets, leaves of some plants will grow into a new plant if they detach from the parent plant. It grows a small plant on the edge of their leaves. Some examples are katakataka and begonia. Number 2. Artificial Vegetative Reproduction It is also called cloning. This type of vegetative reproduction produces the next generation that is generally identical to the parent. 
the various way in artificial reproduction are cuttings, grafting, marketing, layering, and budding. Cuttings This is taken from any part of a plant, such as a stem, leaf, or root, which has been removed from a plant in order to induce the growth of roots to produce new plants. There are three kinds of cutting, namely leaf cutting, stem cutting, and root cutting. It is the most commonly used method in producing new plants. Examples of these plants are sugarcane, cassava, santan, gumamela, bougainvillea, roses, and sampaguita. Grafting it is the most widely used artificial method of reproducing new plants. Santol, mango, lanzones, and calamansi are propagated through this method. It is done by cutting a stem from one plant and attaching it to the stump of another plant. The portion of the stem cut from a tree has many buds, or known as the scion. The stump to which the scion is inserted is called the stock. Marketing This method can be used to propagate any species of woody plants. It can also be used to make new plants just in case the plant is already old. A classic example of this is citrus. Layering it is a method of propagation that encourages new roots to form on branches that are still attached to the parent plant. The stem is covered with soil until it grows roots. When the plant is established, it is cut from the parent plant and planted in a new location. Budding This method is done by making a T-shaped cut as an opening in the stem of the parent plant. Then a scion, which is normally the mature bud, cut from another plant, is inserted underneath the bark of the parent plant, which serves as the stock. The scion must be bound securely to the stock. When the bud grows, it is cut from the mother plant and planted to a new location. Mango and santol can be propagated through this method. There are some plants that reproduce both sexually and asexually. Boss and ferns reproduce asexually by releasing millions of spores through the air. Spores are different to seeds. They do not contain plant embryos or food stores. When the sporangia break open, the spores are released and dispersed by the wind. If the spore lands in a suitable environment, it can grow into a tiny plant called gametophyte. The spores are fed eggs and are spread through the environment by wind. A sexual reproduction does not need seeds. Now let's have fun and do this activity. Determine the mode of a sexual reproduction of the listed plants below. Write N for natural vegetative reproduction and A for artificial vegetative reproduction. Gabi Nice! The answer is N Sweet Potato Very good! The answer is N Citrus That's nice. The answer is A. Lanzones. The correct answer is A. Lotus. Good job. The answer is N. Santol X 
Excellent. The answer is A. Daffodils. Very good. The answer is N. Rose plant. Correct answer is A. Tulip. Very good. The answer is N. Santan. Nice. The answer is A. Grade 5 learners, were you able to determine the mode of a sexual reproduction of the plants listed in learning task 1? Yes! Thumbs up! Now let's do another activity. Learning task 2, identify the specific natural vegetative reproduction that the plants exemplify. Tulip Very good. The answer is bulb. Lotus. Great job. The answer is rhizome. Gabi. Very good. The answer is corn. Sweet potato. Good job! The answer is tuber. Learning task 3. Identify the specific artificial vegetative reproduction that the plants exemplify. Choose from the choices given. Gumamela. The correct answer is cuttings. Santol. The answer can either be grafting or budding. Santan. Excellent! The answer is cuttings. Citrus. Very good! The answer is marketing. Mango. The answer can either be grafting or budding. Grade 5 learners, remember that the two methods of asexual reproduction in plants are natural vegetative reproduction by structure modification such as runners, bulbs, tubers, rhizomes, suckers, and plantlets. The other one is artificial vegetative reproduction. This type of vegetative reproduction produces the next generation that is generally identical to the parent. The various ways are cutting, grafting, marketing, layering, and budding. That's all for today, Grade 5 Learners! I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.